Hello, today we're going to talk about reactivity 1.3.5. Um, this one is all about fuel cells. Okay, so when we're talking about electrochemical cells, we're talking about redox reactions that are either producing electrical energy or consuming. Um, in this case, we're, we're going to focus on primary cells, which are also called voltaic cells. or galvanic cells. And their difference between those and then fuel cells. Both of these are going to be producing electrical energy, producing electricity. Um, so that's the same about them. But a voltaic or a galvanic cell is going to have a limited amount of reactant, and so it will eventually run out um, and it will stop producing electrical energy. Um, a good example of this are normal batteries, like um, alkaline batteries or lithium ion batteries. Eventually they're going to run out and stop producing electrical energy. Fuel cells on the other hand are going to produce energy, um, but as long as you provide it fuel, it's going to keep going. Keeps going as long as fuel is provided. And we're going to look at um, two types of fuel cells in detail. We're going to talk about hydrogen fuel cells and uh, methanol fuel cells. There are others. Um, we're going to focus on those two. But the big uh, like a distinguishing feature of them is that as long as you're inputting fuel, they're going to continue to produce the electrical energy. OK, so let's focus in on the hydrogen fuel cell. Um, this is a really good alternative to um, fossil fuels or even certain biofuels because you're not producing carbon dioxide as one of the products. The overall reaction here is really just hydrogen reacting with oxygen to produce water. So no, no carbon dioxide there, no greenhouse gas produced, just water vapor. Um, the problem comes is where do you get the hydrogen gas from? We have a hydro, we have oxygen in the air, so it can react with oxygen from the air, but you need a hydrogen source. Now let's look at the general structure of a hydrogen fuel cell. Um, typically it will look something like this, where you have your negative electrode, which is your anode for a fuel cell, and your positive electrode, which is your cathode for a fuel cell. And the oxygen gas is going to come in at the cathode, and hydrogen gas needs to come in at the anode. Um, so let's look at the uh, oxidation numbers here. In the reactants, they're both zero because they're elements in their standard state. On the product side, the hydrogen has a plus one oxidation state, and the oxygen is a negative two. So you can see the hydrogen is being oxidized, which is why it's happening at the anode, and oxygen is being reduced, which is why it's at the cathode. Now in the middle here, you have some kind of electrolyte. And um, typically they'll tell you whether it's an acidic or a basic solution, um, but the electrolyte needs to be around. Um, and typically there will be a transfer of hydroxide and an output of water. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like. The electrons flow from the anode to the cathode as always. Um, oxidation is losing electrons, so the electrons have to leave the anode and go towards the cathode. So let's look at the um, two half reactions that are around um, for this. The, um, if we're looking at the anode side, The hydrogen is being converted into water. And so when you're balancing redox reactions like this, you always balance the um, atoms that are not hydrogen or oxygen first. Then you balance oxygen by adding water. Which is kind of weird. Um, but then you balance hydrogens by adding um, hydrogen ions. So we need two hydrogen ions on the product side. 
and then you balance electrons, um, you balance the charge using electrons. So I need two additional electrons over here to cancel out the two positives from the hydrogen ions. Um, you can see also that the waters cancel out here. Um, another thing that you want to take into account is that the, your electrolyte solution. In this case, let's say we've got potassium hydroxide. That's a basic solution. I have extra hydroxides. So what that will do is you're going to need two hydroxides on both sides. And that, because you want to get rid of the acid solution, so you'll have two hydroxide ions, and you'll wind up with um, two water molecules being formed like that. And so that is your half reaction at the anode. Uh, for the cathode, you have your oxygen gas being converted into water. Um, so I'll need two water molecules to balance out the two oxygens. Um, and then I need to add four hydrogen ions and four electrons to cancel that out. Um, but this is an, an acidic solution right now. In our cell, we have hydroxide ions, and it's a basic solution. So we need to cancel that out. I need to use four hydroxide ions on both sides. Um, to cancel out what's going on here. So I have my O2 plus four water molecules now, because those can't um, neutralize each other, plus four electrons goes to two water molecules and four hydroxides. Well, the water molecules, two of them are going to cancel out. So two of those cancel and you have two um, on the reactant side there. Um, so this is your half reaction at the cathode. So while um, hydrogen fuel cells are really great in that they don't produce any carbon dioxide um, and they still produce a significant amount of energy, the problem is getting the source of hydrogen. Um, a lot of times you still have to like burn fossil fuels to get hydrogen gas because it does not occur significantly in nature. Um, another alternative would be a methanol fuel cell. Um, so in a methanol fuel cell, you're using methanol as a fuel instead of hydrogen. Um, it is a liquid at room temperature instead of a gas like hydrogen gas. So it is, uh, methanol is easier to transport. And it reacts pretty easily in acidic conditions. Um, so let's take a look at our um, half reactions here. So let's start with, um, let's start talking at the anode. The methanol itself needs to be oxidized. And it will form carbon dioxide. Um, let's see, carbon's already balanced. Um, to balance the oxygens, I need to add a water. And to balance the hydrogens, I need to add six hydrogen ions. So I will need six electrons to cancel the charge. So that is my half reaction at the anode. I don't need to do anything else after this because it is in acidic conditions. For the cathode, you're going to be worried about the oxygen. And it's going to produce water and I need two of those. So I will take four hydrogens and four electrons. Now to get those to balance out electrons, we need to balance out the electrons. You're going to need to multiply this reaction by two and this reaction by three. So it will take two of the methanols um, plus two waters plus three oxygens and 12 hydrogens to produce two CO2 plus 12 hydrogens plus six waters. Um, and then you'll notice some things will cancel out. So the hydrogen ions completely cancel and two of the water molecules cancel out. So our overall balanced equation is two CH3OH plus three oxygens 
give us two CO2s and four waters. Um, and then a lot of times you will see this written in terms of one mole of the methanol, so CH3OH plus three halves oxygen gives off CO2 and two waters. Um, either way is okay for me, they're both balanced, um, but this one is just written in terms of one mole of methanol uh, versus two. Um, and so this is the overall reaction that happens in a methanol fuel cell. So as long as you're providing more and more methanol to the fuel cell, it will continue to produce um, energy. Now there are other types of fuel cells out there, but these are probably the more common ones, um, hydrogen and then methanol. Methanol um, produces carbon dioxide as a, a product, which is um, somewhat problematic uh, depending on your goals for your fuel cell uh, because it is a greenhouse gas. Uh, whereas hydrogen, actually obtaining the hydrogen gas is difficult and hydrogen uh, is also explosive. So you have storage issues and transportation issues. Okay, so for this example, we need to um, find the half reactions for the anode and cathode for the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell with aqueous sodium hydroxide as the electrolyte. Always pay attention to the electrolyte because it might be in acidic conditions or basic conditions. Um, so for the anode, you're going to have the hydrogen gas and we're going to be forming um, water. And to get this to balance, I need to use a water molecule and uh, four, I'm sorry, two hydrogens and two electrons. Um, that way the charge cancels out here and we have four total hydrogens on both sides. Um, now, because of that, the waters do cancel out, and because it's in a basic solution, I need to add two hydroxides to both sides. So H2 plus two hydroxides um, yields two waters, because these combine, and two electrons. Then at the cathode, our oxygen gas is turning into water vapor. Um, and then I need to balance the hydrogens. Um, I need oxygens first, there we go. Um, so four hydrogens and four electrons to cancel that charge. Now it's in a basic solution, so I need to cancel out the hydrogens. So I need four hydroxides on both sides. So this will make four waters. And so two of the waters cancel, and we're left with two waters, four electrons, and our oxygen gas forming four hydroxide ions. And so those are our half reactions at the anode and the cathode. And then this links to reactivity 3.2, which is all about um, electrochemical cells. Um, but the differences between a fuel cell and a primary or voltaic cell, it's also called galvanic cell, we talked about the difference here that a fuel cell, as long as you are providing enough fuel to keep it going, it will just keep going. Whereas a primary or a voltaic cell will eventually run out of the materials, um, whether it's in an enclosed battery or if you have like an open, like two beakers connected with a salt bridge, you'll eventually run out of the materials to make the voltaic cell run. Um, so those are the, the biggest difference. Um, a similarity between them is that they're both producing energy. Um, and that would be a difference from a electrolytic cell, which requires an input of energy.